The banker has named Luis Videgaray, Mexico finance minister, finance minister of the year, on the back of the wide-ranging, deep reform that the country has embarked upon. I'm joined by Minister Videgaray, thank you so much, who has just uh, uh, popped in on his way back from the World Economic Forum in Davos to pick up the award. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for joining me. Uh, thank you, Silva. It's, uh, uh, Silvia, it's really an honor to, to get this award, uh, but not, not really for me, but for Mexico and for all the people involved in this reform process led by President Enrique Peña Nieto. I know you're really keen to stress out that uh, it was really the government's commitment to bring in together this uh, wide package of reforms that uh, should be acknowledged. Um, uh, but also, you've played a big role in bringing about some reforms that perhaps haven't been really publicized as much um, uh, or haven't got so much enthusiasm because they're a little bit less known than, for example, the energy reform, which uh, is uh, uh, finally breaking the 75-year monopoly in that sector. The uh, reform that I'm talking about is the one that uh, um, will touch the banking markets and the financial markets in general. Can you maybe zoom in a little on, uh, on this one? Absolutely. It's a, it's a deep uh, reform that will allow Mexico to have uh, more lending, particularly to small and medium uh, size uh, enterprises that create in Mexico three out of four jobs. Uh, uh, it's, a, it's a reform about competition allowing ba uh, for uh, making banks to compete more in favor of their customers. Uh, it's, a, it's a reform about uh, enhancing the rule of law so that banks can execute their uh, execute guarantees, recover their loans, and, and even to uh, expedite and make a more transparent bankruptcy, bankruptcy procedure. And um, it's, a, it's, it's also a reform about uh, our national development banks to focus on market development, not going after the same clients and, and commercial banks do, but really to go after financial inclusion, making bringing into the financial system uh, the, the many Mexicans that don't have even a bank account. Um, and of course, uh, it's also uh, a reform about strengthening our bank regulation. Mm -hmm. uh, we have very strong banks in terms of capitalization, liquidity, and we want them to remain like that. And so another point, you rightly mentioned that uh, Mexican banks have a really strong capitalization, uh, but yet the um, banking penetration is still quite low in the country. I believe it's around 30% to GDP. Um, do you believe that this um, reform is going to um, increase the banking penetration? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, bank penetration is only 20, 26% of GDP. Mm -hmm. And uh, our it's, it's, uh, bank lending is growing at a pace of uh, 7% on average. Uh, every year, we think we can double that rate, and if we do that, uh, ten years out, we'll we'll, we'll have a, a penetration of fifty percent of GDP, and we'll do it not by forcing lending, or by uh, or or, or by doing a, um, a so, so subsidizing lending, but we'll do it by mm -hmm. really transforming uh, the cost of lending uh, uh, by enhancing the rule of law and enhancing competition. So, this is an ambitious reform. Uh, the reform has, is fully is fully enacted, and now it's all about implementation. Fantastic. And um, as I said, you are on your way back from Davos. I'm really curious to um, uh, know what kind of discussions you had uh, with potential investors, perhaps, or commentators anyway, about Mexico. What kind of reception did you get? Well, it's, it, it was a good Davos for Mexico because there's a lot of, inter lot of interest in what's going on in Mexico, about the reforms that President Peña Nieto is, uh, is pushing forward uh, and what's been accomplished. Uh, the, the last year, we met with many um, uh, CEOs of companies that are not in Mexico right now and are looking forward to, to, to establish a presence in Mexico or to invest in Mexico. There were some big uh, uh, foreign direct investment announcements um, already done in, in Davos, and it was, um, it, it, was, it, it was a good opportunity to, to, to explain and, and, and to tell uh, uh, decision makers what opportunities uh, there are in Mexico for us to attract, in, attract investments that create jobs and, and, and create wealth in Mexico. Uh, are you getting interest, I, I presume, in the sectors that are uh, opening up a bit more, so in the energy sector, in the telecom sector? Yeah, absolutely, sector? Ab absolutely. There's a, there's a particular interest uh, in companies in clean energy, of course, uh, oil and gas. Uh, there's a lot of uh, interest, but also it's, uh, they're, they're also in consumer goods, uh, uh, information technology. I mean, uh, fortunately, we're getting interest uh, across the board. 
Now, something else I wanted to ask you um, is about investor sentiment towards emerging markets. So we went from um, a period where um, a lot of them were really very much on emerging markets to now mm -hmm. where they're feeling, perhaps on the back of, quite rightly, on the back of um, what's happening in the United States, they're kind of retracting from uh, those markets, and we are also seeing this uh, reflected in uh, the currencies. Although obviously the Mexican peso is not doing as, as badly um, as others against the dollar, but um, are you concerned at all about uh, international investors' sentiment towards the major markets and how this may affect Mexico? Well, uh, s uh, the, the sentiment is very much affected by uh, the tapering, uh, when the, how the Federal Reserve starts moving away from uh, uh, the unconventional monetary policies um, of QE3. Uh, and uh, to Mexico, this is a good sign because we are very much linked to the US economy. And for us, a driver, a, a very important driver of our growth is growth in the US. So the fact that there is taper talk and the tapering is happening is a sign of a very good thing, which is for us, US growth. Of course, we are an emerging market. Uh, we are a very open um, economy, both to trade and to financial flows. So therefore, um, uh, volatility in emerging markets will affect us. But we, we, we have strong fundamentals. Uh, that we have no major disbalance uh, on balances. We have, uh, we have a small current account deficit. Uh, uh, we have a low debt to GDP ratio. So we're in good, we're, we're in good shape. Um, and as soon as, as, as risk aversion abates, uh, uh, we, we expect investors to clearly differentiate across emerging markets. Very good. Well, thank you so much for your comments. Thank you, Silva. It's a pleasure to be here, and thank you again to the banker.